Hello, thank you for joining us today for our virtual tour of a Minnesota dairy farm. Today's tour is brought to you by Midwest Dairy and Discover Dairy. My name is Alex and I'm with Midwest Dairy where I work on behalf of 6,500 dairy farm families across our 10 state Midwest region. Before I introduce you to our dairy farm family, I want to encourage those that are watching on YouTube to use the chat box window to ask questions, leave comments throughout the tour. I'll be moderating today, so make sure um, I'll make sure that your questions get answered. Um, in the future, if you do have questions, you can check out Trailside Holstein's Facebook page and connect with the Johnsons there. Here in Minnesota, we have approximately 2,700 dairy farms, and I'm happy to be here with one of them. Uh, dairy farmer Margaret and Michael Johnson, and they are ready to give us a tour of their family's farm. You'll also see their four kids running around as well. So it's going to be a really fun time today. Um, so Trailside Holsteins is located in Fountain, Minnesota. Hi, Margaret. Hi, Alex. Thank you. Welcome everyone to our farm. Welcome to Trailside Holsteins. As Alex mentioned, we are in southeast Minnesota. We're in Fillmore County, right along the Root River State Bike Trail. Kind of goes right through our farm. It's a very scenic part of the part of Minnesota, and we are happy to be dairy farming here. Um, our farm has been located in this right here um, since 1978. And we're excited to kind of walk you through some of the things that we do here on a daily basis. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what we were doing this morning. The weather has been beautiful here in southeast Minnesota, and we have had uh, really nice sunny days for the last week. And today we've had rain. And so there's so three really great things about the rain that we have today. First of all, uh, it's been rainy. It's been nice. So it's, we've been doing a lot of field work. So um, yesterday alone, we planted four, over 4 million little corn seeds yesterday. So just yesterday for about six hours, um, six to 10 hours, my father-in-law was busy planting corn. So 4 million seeds. Think about that. Uh, it was very exciting. Um, just this morning, my father-in-law was finishing a field, and uh, I think there's a video on the screen that you can see of him. That's our corn planter, and he's out in the field uh, planting all of those seeds. So we can plant 16 corn rows at a time, and every seed is about six inches apart. So it's pretty exciting technology and pretty exciting to get our corn in the ground because that will become our feed for our cows later on. So that's the first good thing about the rain is now all those little corn seeds have a little shot of rain just like you'd water your garden. The next thing is that we don't need to worry about our cows uh, getting wet because they are cozy in our barn so they don't have to be getting rained on, they don't have to be cold because they're busy just being cozy doing their thing. And the third good thing about the rain is that we're doing a virtual farm tour. So even though that it's raining, you can still join us on this tour through uh, being at home and watch us from your own comforts wherever you are. So thank you for joining us. Uh, we're here located in our maternity barn. All these cows here are waiting to have babies. And uh, I always like this barn. It's very peaceful. The cows are always relaxing. And so that's why I wanted to start here. But something that I wanted to talk about before we can really start about talking about the cows and what they've been um, what they're doing for us and what we're doing together is where we all started. As I mentioned in 1978, my father-in-law moved here and brought his um, family with him. And we have a picture of what the farm looked like in 1978. My son Levi is holding it here. So we'll kind of zoom in and you kind of see, this is a winter picture. We are very much a family farm. We farm with, like I mentioned, my father-in-law and then my husband, Michael, and I will let him talk a little bit about the farm because he uh, grew up here. I think there's a picture of him uh, uh, showing a calf or getting his calf ready for the fair when he was just a little boy right here on this farm. And so uh, we'll go, so Michael, do you wanna say anything about this picture in particular? Some of the same buildings that are here today and the railroad maybe. So. Yeah, so yeah, welcome to our farm, Trailside Holsteins. This picture is from when we first moved here. As you can see on the bottom corner is actually the old railroad bed. Uh, still one at that time, it is now a bike trail. 
tents are named at Trailside Holstein's. Um, most of these barns have been either remodeled or torn down for newer and more efficient barns. And I have another picture here that's more of a current one. And as you can see, the farm has changed a lot over the years. Not only did it get greener, but <laughs> there's more buildings and more feed storage. And every change that we've ever done over the years has always been with the well-being of the animals or to improve a better work environment for ourselves and our employees. So that's every time whenever we're looking at an improvement or a change, that's the first and last thing that we think about. So, so our family is here, Michael and I were, we had our actually our wedding reception here on the farm and that was 10 years ago. And now we have four kids that help us on the farm. We have Sawyer, Levi, Clara, and Jacob, and they kind of run around the farm. It's kind of an extension of home to them. So they're pretty comfortable here and kind of do their own thing. Um, they're finding bugs and puddles and all kinds of things. So you'll see them running around as we do the tour. Um, they're busy, they're, yeah, puddles are a fun time. So I guess that's a fourth good thing about the rain. Who doesn't like to play in a mud puddle? So um, let's talk a little bit about the cows that we have behind us here. These cows are on vacation. So they are waiting to have babies and we put them in a pen like this so they can, be, they can stretch out, they can be comfortable, they can lay in this nice straw and then they will have their baby here. Um, this whole barn is full of cows that are waiting to have babies. Uh, they don't go to the milking parlor during this time for about two months. They are on vacation and the only thing, their only job is to relax and eat a lot of good food and grow that baby to give our calves the healthiest start that they can. So a couple weeks before they're going to have their baby, we bring them in here so we can closely monitor them. About every half an hour, uh, an employee or or one of us will come through and check and see if any cows are having babies or are gonna show any signs of labor, um, just so we can monitor everything that's going on and make sure that they can have their baby, baby safely. Almost all of them have their babies on their own without any assistance, which is the most natural and best way for the cows to, to have their babies. So we bring them right into this clean environment right to start. Uh, there is a video we have of a mom licking off her calf. So when uh, there aren't any cows actively having calves right now. So that would have been pretty neat part of a virtual tour, but there is a video clip of a new baby that um, the mom is licking off and kind of the licking stimulates her, stimulates the calf and cleans off the calf. And after they've done that, then we bring them over into our warm room. And we actually had a new baby last night. So the employees will bring our babies into this um, calf room. So Margaret, how long is uh, the cow pregnant for then? That's a great question. A uh, cow is pregnant for about nine months, very similar to a human. So our new baby is right here. You can see her, she comes into one of these pens. In the winter time, this room has, has heat and uh, it warms them up and gets them dry and warm. And um, they have their first milk called Clostrum in here. We take, we um, get Clostrum from the, the mother and feed the calf within usually the first hour of the calf's life. And at that time, the calf has already trained to stand up. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna weigh this calf. We always, we weigh our calves to know what they start at as a birth weight. So I'll let Mike help out with that. Levi found a worm, so he's ready to go fishing. He is definitely our animal man here and he loves worms and bugs and all things creepy crawly, so. So we have over here a little calf scale and we're gonna weigh her. So we know how much she weighs and then we know how much she's eating and how much she's growing, just like a newborn baby would get weighed. So we'll zero it out and we'll put her in here. And this calf comes from a family of mothers that have names that start with S's. 
So you can get a good look at this calf. And if you'd like to submit a name that starts with an S, we would love to get a new name for her. And then we will post it on our Facebook page and see um, what the winning name is, what we come up with. So anybody that has any suggestions of what you'd like to weigh the name this baby would be great. And if you saw on the scale, she weighs 79 pounds. So Margaret, with um, those those expecting moms in the maternity barn, how do you know that the cows are happy? Like what type of um, signs would they be showing that they're happy cows? That's a great question, Alex. So they're laying down, they're comfortable, they are chewing their cud, uh, they're in nice clean bedding so the cows are clean themselves. Um, maybe Mike would have more to add about our comfortable cows that are laying down there. He's getting the baby back in her pen here. So as Margaret said, this baby, actually when I, she was born this morning, I looked her up and I saw who her mom was on the computer and who her dad was. And her great, great grandma was a cow named Star. And she was a really special cow to at our farm. And then she was a shottle. And so it was a lot of S's and Solution was one of the mom's name. And we're pretty excited about this baby being a part of our herd now. And one other quick thing on the baby, so we know that she is getting the first um, a good start to her life. We record who the mom is and what time she was born. And so what we know what time she got her colostrum and that she got enough. So we just, we want to always make sure every baby gets the best start. So on the um, cows to, to tell if they're comfortable, uh, we always know that they are, if they're laying down, that's a good sign. And if they are ruminating, a cow is moving her mouth, chewing her cud which they do for six to eight hours a day, which is, shows that they're relaxed and they are really happy. So we know that a lot of those cows you could see in there were just standing around looking at us chewing their cud, laying down, and that is always, those are all good signs that they're relaxed and content. Um, we did pull off a couple, pull out a couple of things here. This is the calf bottle that the calf drinks out of. So the calf will get a full bottle um, twice a day we feed our calves and then they have water and grain whenever they want. Um, but this is a much bigger bottle than a baby bottle. So this is five pints is what's in our bottle. And then as they get a little bit older, they get calf grain. And in the grain, you can see there is corn and oats and pellets that have like vitamins and minerals and roasted soybeans. And another good thing in there that all young people, all babies have really like sugar. My kids really like sugar and the calves like the sugar too. So there's a little bit of molasses in there. So actually the feed smells really good and tastes good. So they eat enough feed. And um, so that's what they get when they first start eating food. It's kind of like cereal to them. Um, so, not only do we like to have our new moms comfortable, but we like to have all of our cows comfortable in our in our barns. Uh, so, yeah, it's not raining right now, so we can come come this hey, way. Margaret, we've got some questions coming in. Um, okay, people are wondering how many cows do you have, and how many are ready to have babies. Oh, that's a great question. I'll let Mike answer that question. Yeah. Sorry, I had to. We have one baby that's not here with us right now because he's sleeping. So Sawyer, our seven-year-old, I was just talking to him. He's going to go check on him, see if he's still doing good. So part of being a family here on the farm. So uh, we have, there's, right now there's 20 cows in here that are close to having a baby. They'll have the baby in the next to seven to 14 days. And there are 62 cows in the far end that are laying on the sand free stalls. And those are what we call our dry cows. So those are all the cows that are on vacation and they are not, not producing milk at this time. And as a total, we've got 600 cows here at Trailside Holstein. Can you say that again, Margaret, how many cows do you have total? 600 cows are how many cows that are milking. And then we have about 600 more replacements. So those are calves and heifers that are um, going to eventually join our milk, milking herd. So about 1,200 animals total that we keep track of on a daily basis. So Margaret, let's head over to our next spot here and I've got a question for us um, as we're walking. How many people do you employ on the farm? So 
do you want to talk about that? So employees are a really big part as I'm of our farm. As I just mentioned, we um, have 1,200 animals to keep track of. So that's a lot. Plus, we do all the field work that we can and provide all the feed for our own cows. So it's a lot of work to do. And we could not do it without all of our employees. So we have 12 employees here at the farm. Uh, and everybody kind of has their own specialized job. We have milkers that their main job is to do a really good job in the milking parlor with the cows. We have a full, almost full-time calf, uh, calf person who is the, um, she focuses on calf care. And we have a couple of guys that work in the shop. And then my husband is kind of the herdsman who kind of oversees all of the, uh, all the cow stuff. I guess <laughs> you could call it. And then my father-in-law, he kind of oversees all the crop stuff. So all the tractor and equipment kind of stuff. And Mike does all the cow stuff is kind of what we, what we say. Uh, but not only do we have employees that are a really big part of our farm, but we also have a huge team around us. We work with veterinarians. We work with nutritionists, uh, all kinds of different people that really are all of our main goal is to provide safe, uh, nutritious milk and take the very best care of our cows and our land. So these cows here um, are kind of just having a snack, hanging out. They're done in the milking parlor. They spend a very brief time in the milking parlor on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, they only they go there three times a day. We milk our cows three times a day. But you mentioned cow comfort and I want Mike to talk a little bit about something that's special and how we can kind of keep track of our cows' individual comfort and how we know that they're all comfort, comfortable. We have, a, we have a guest appearance now. This is our baby Jacob. He, he'll be one year old on Friday, so. Um, so yeah, Margaret was talking about how uh, we, take care of our cows and treat them like individual an or uh, individuals and we know how they're all doing and so uh, six years ago or almost six years ago we invested I guess in a technology that allows us to help um, our communicate with our cows I like to say kind of like our little Jacob here they don't talk to us and it's hard for them to tell us you know how they're feeling if they're not feeling well and uh, so this technology is uh, it's actually in an ear tag and it's similar to your phone it uses so when you tip your phone up and down and your screen changes, that's the same type of thing that's in here, all along with a battery and some temperature sensors. And so every single one of our animals on this farm, there's 650 of these that have tags in them on their, in their ears. And this helps me know when the cow is eating, when she's chewing her cud, um, if she has a fever. And so not only can I tell when a cow is not feeling good, I can tell when she's walking. I can tell if, if uh, her temperature gets really cold. So it allows me to keep track of all of our animals and provide the best care that I can. Uh, with so many animals, I can't keep an eye on every single one and they can't tell me how they're feeling. Um, just for a ex really good example, just today I had one cow, so only one out of 640 that said she was possibly sick. So I went and found that cow and I checked her and she did have a fever. She had a little bit of uh, her her stool was a little off, so I was able to secure her and uh, give her the attention that she needed on a timely basis. So it's an awesome use of technology that we are able to implement on our farm to uh, better care for animals. So it's kind of like a Fitbit for cows. So it kind of keeps track of our cows similar to a Fitbit would. If anybody has one or their mom and dad wear one, it keeps track of how much they're eating, how much they're sleeping, how much they're exercising, all of those things. And then we can monitor that through technology. It all goes to Mike's phone and goes to the computer so we can keep track of it that way. So anywhere in the world where we have internet, we can check on our cows uh, through Mike's phone and through these cow manager tags. So it is a really fun technology. So Margaret, I'm getting a lot of calf questions here naturally since, uh... You know, those calves are so dang cute. So um, how many calves are born on your farm uh, a year? And then are calves born with teeth? Mike's going to answer these questions. Okay. So we have about two babies a day is what we average. So about 700 babies a year. Um, and 
no, calves are not born with teeth, and cows actually only have teeth on the bottom. And so they cows they they uh, grind their food, they chew it. That's what they're when they're chewing their mouth. So they as they get older, they can grind their teeth. And so cows only have them on the bottom and grind them. So, but babies, I'm sorry, babies are born with some teeth, but they're very small. And um, cause I was just thinking about yeah, <laughs> they are very sharp because sometimes you have to be careful when we are giving them their first feeding when they're trying to learn how to suck on a nipple. Uh, a couple more calf questions. Um, do, cow, uh, do cows have more than one calf at a time? And then uh, do the cows have the same black and white spots as their parents? Well, those are really good questions. So um, the first question, do cows have more than one baby at a time? We, it is the safest thing for a cow to have one baby. So the majority of the cows have one baby at a time. They can have twins sometimes. And in that case, um, we have a veterinarian come once a week and he goes through our herd with us and talks about every cow individually and we check them throughout their pregnancy and the veterinarian will take a ultrasound and check the cow and then he will let us know if that cow is pregnant with twins. And so then we give her a marking on her back just with some um, chalk and then we mark her back and so then the employees and everybody at the farm knows that that cow is pregnant with twins and might need a little extra assistance during the time that she's on vacation. So we do give those cows that are, are possibly going to have twins a little extra attention. And the next question about the markings is also a really fun question. First fun fact about uh, our Holstein cows here is that no two cows will have the same markings. So they're kind of like snowflakes. They're all completely individual. They don't have the same markings, but they do, I think they do have resemblance to a lot of times their mother, sometimes maybe their father. And um, so maybe a really white cow will have a really white calf. I know a while ago we had kind of a family that would have spotted cows and calves. And so every, you kind of always knew maybe that she belonged to that cow family because they were all spotted so it is kind of fun to see how they have resemblance I always think that sometimes when we have a pair of twins I think the twins kind of resemble each other too but that's not always the case but it is fun to see if they will resemble each other or not uh, one more calf question here um, when does the calf um, actually start eating actual food or feed is Mike unmuted you want to talk about that when you start giving them feed? Oh, okay. Yeah, so we, we give the babies milk for the first two months of their life. And after about a week old, they start getting introduced to grain and to corn. So they will start to lick at that, start to play with it, eat it a little bit. And then slowly at the end of two months, we will transition them from drinking um, or their diet calories, primarily coming from milk to go, coming from grain. And then at about three months, we'll introduce forages to them and silage. So they'll start to um, transition from grain to a forage based diet. And actually we uh, are pretty lucky today. We have our camera person is our main calf care. So Amanda does a great job caring for our calves and today she's doing a great job running the camera. Um, but if she wants to scan uh, behind her, that'll show our calf houses or the, some of them that we use. Um, so the, for when the calf is born, we keep them in, the, in that room that we call the warm room because it's a nice, clean, warm place for in the winter to put them in the summer. And that's where we get them, make sure they get their colostrum, make sure their um, belly button is taken care of and um, they, are, they get off to a good start. And then at about a day or two days old, when, they're, when they are standing good and lively, we'll move them to their own individual house. And they'll stay in these individual houses for their first two months. And um, we do this really for the 100 percent for the health of the calf because we want to make sure that that calf is uh getting enough to eat every day and we want to prevent her from any illnesses and one of the best ways to do that is by uh I, um distancing i guess kind of what we're all <laughs> becoming used to or hearing a lot of is social distancing lately. well we've been doing that a long time with babies because um as anybody that's had babies know they are prone to get sick easier so our calves, we separate them so we can give them individual care and keep a really close eye on them. And then after, after they're two months old, they have, they have developed their own immune system. And then we begin to group them. We first put them in groups of four, and then they go to groups of 12, and they gradually learn to um, socialize with other of their herd mates. So. I think it's also 
important to um, to point out that you know they a lot of times will you know they're social animals they're in the herd together and they they join each other in the they'll join their sisters and they'll join their mothers in the milking herd after they've been uh, at their various different growing stages so um, calves are really important here at the farm. So we have a question from Stephanie on our uh, live chat feed here on YouTube. Uh, do you bottle feed all of them? Great question. The majority of our calves get, but they all start with a bottle and then the majority of them get uh, bottle fed. After they get bigger, sometimes they get, they get put into a group of four and then we have kind of like a big pail that has nipples on it so they can suck milk out of the pail. That's how they get fed after they get a little bit older and they start going into a group pen and they're still getting milk. The calves are kind of starting to perk up and come out now that the rain stopped, but that was, I was gonna point out that it was kind of raining. So they were all kind of in their own individual house there for a little bit to stay out of the rain so they can stay dry and warm in these huts. They stay there even in the winter time and the straw gives them a cozy nest uh, in the winter. And if you go inside a calf hut, the calf's body heat keeps the hut warm uh, during the winter. And it gives them shade during the summer. I'm seeing a lot of S names coming in. We've got Samantha, Skyler, Suzanne, Sarah, Sophie, Suri, lots of names coming in. We love that. Um, love to see you guys watching today. Um, so I've got a question from Tony about how many acres do you plant crops in? Okay, so we're, we're, we plant crops on about 1100 acres and we plant all corn and all alfalfa. And alfalfa is a really good crop that's really important for our cows, but it is kind of like your lawn and grows back every, every year. So we have a crop of alfalfa of, um, for about four years, we'll harvest alfalfa. We can harvest four crops every, every year for four years, and then we'll dig it up and put corn there. And alfalfa is a great crop because it helps with soil erosion it's, uh, like I said, it's kind of like your lawn. So you cut it short and then it comes back and then we can cut it again. So we cut our hay four times a year usually. And then uh, corn, which I mentioned, goes on about half our acres. And the corn is an annual crop. So we plant it every single year. And we, our, our crop rotation is three or four years of hay and then three or four years of corn. And it kind of alternates back and forth. The alfalfa ground is really great for soil erosion. We live in kind of a hilly area, so it's good on our hillsides. And the corn is really a great feed for our cows. It's those really tall plants that you see probably driving down the road. And uh, little, they're even taller than sweet corn. Sometimes they're almost taller than our chopper. So it's a really fun crop. It grows really fast, grows really tall, really fast. So it's fun to watch it throughout the summer. Um, my favorite crop, I guess, is alfalfa. Let's probably. head in the barn here. I want to see some more cows. I know there's a lot of people that just love, just love looking at the cows here today. Um, so I'm seeing a question. Do, do you have any cows with brown spots? That's from Wendy Bishop. Oh, we do have, we have a cow. So right in kind of in the middle here, we have a red and white Holstein cow. And so she kind of has brown spots. Uh, and then we have a few brown Swiss, which are sprinkled in, and they usually, they're really good at photobombing. So almost every family picture or any kind of picture that we have, even though we only have like six in the entire herd, they kind of manage to be in the picture. I miraculously don't see one right this second, but maybe if we give it some time, one will show up. But most of our cows are just black and white. And then what kind, and of kind of, you, what kind of bedding do you use in the aisles of your free stalls there and why? Go ahead. You can talk about the sand. Mike will talk about the sand. So, so we've just entered. So we, before we were over looking at the cows are laying in straw and that's where they lay when they're starting getting close to have a baby. And now we are in a free, our free stall barn and the cows are laying in sand. So this is sand that is, um, it's bluff sand and it provides a really good, comfortable environment for our cows to lay in. 
uh, we add new sand every week and we clean it and level it out at three times a day. Every time we bring the cows to the, uh, the milking parlor, we clean the, the entire pen for the cows. And so this is our freestyle barn. We call it a freestyle barn because it's a, an open environment where cows are free to do whatever they would like for all day long. They can eat, uh, they lay down, they can walk around and drink. And a cow will a cow will lay down for an average of 14 hours a day. They're kind of lazy animals, which is all right. That's we just let them do what they want to do. And uh, in this barn, we also have fans that are thermostat controlled. So as it gets warmer, the more fans will turn on to keep the cows cool. And we also have sprinklers. So when it gets really hot in the summer, just like we like to go out and get oh gosh, here's our brown Swiss. Clara found one. Um, we like to go get uh, get cool with a sprinkler. That's what we do to our cows too to keep them cool. Uh, interesting fact about cows is their ideal temperature where they're the most comfortable is about 50 degrees. So kind of like me, that's what I like, and that's so our cows. Me and my cows get along well. So we like it cool. So we try to keep our barns as cool as we can and uh, comfortable for the cows. Anything else you want to add on that, Margaret? So as in here, we do the best we can to control the environment for the cows. So in the winter, we close the barn up and it actually stays very warm in here. And then in the summer, as I was saying, we do, we alleviate the um, heat off the cows. So we are, we have modified this barn over the years to provide the best environment for the cows and the cows are really, really content and happy. We do have some areas that uh, cows have had access to either being outside or being in the barn and about 90 or almost all of the time they will uh they will choose to be inside of our freestyle barn they like, to be close to their they like to be close to their beds they like to be comfortable so they usually don't walk out of the barn and go out to the pasture because they would rather be close to their feed and close to their beds so like mentioned they're kind of lazy but they work hard and uh they need to rest so they can make milk and they can do whatever they want to do. So we're going to talk a little bit about the feed. Uh, we mentioned that we grow corn and alfalfa. And you can see this, these piles of stuff in front of their, their pens here. And that's their feed. And we here at the farm call that a TMR. And I will show you the ingredients for it. But I believe there's a picture. My father-in-law is in charge of all the feeding. And he mixes the feed every morning and the cows get fed once or twice a day, uh, depending on how much feed they need that day. And the corn and alfalfa we put into big bunkers and big piles and big bags. And then uh, we put it into, you can show the video of my father-in-law putting the feed into the big mixer, which is kind of like a big blender. And then he delivers the feed with his tractor every morning for the cows to eat. And we'll talk a little bit about the ingredients that we have. I kind of separated them, them out because right now the feed, we call it TMR, which is a total mixed ration, which to me is kind of just like a big cow smoothie. And the idea behind it looking like a smoothie is that it's all, it's all, um, it's all blended together so every bite is the same. So the cows can't sort out the pieces that they want, that is their favorite parts. So just like you put in a smoothie, maybe you'll put strawberries and yogurt and milk in there. Maybe your mom will sneak in some spinach. So once it's blended up, it's all blended together and all tastes the same. But if you have individual, you can separate those ingredients and maybe not eat the spinach that your mom wants you to eat. So we blend it all up together so the cows get all the nutrients. We work with a nutritionist so that the nutritionist can tell us what will be a balanced diet for all of our individual um, groups of cows. And here we have the feed over here, the ingredients that go in the feed. And so here we have corn silage and some ground corn. So corn silage comes from the corn plant that we chop off our own land. And so does this corn. Um, this is haylage and haylage is the alfalfa that we grow and then chopped up and put into a bag. Then we have dry hay and cotton seed and corn gluten and soybean meal. So all of these things is what's ground up and put into our feed. So cotton seed is kind of an interesting one because it is a byproduct of making clothes. So 
Um, after the cotton is pulled off of the cotton plant, there's a seed inside of it, and that is here, and that's what we feed our cows. And so the majority of the feed, Levi, do you want to hold up the cotton seed so they can see it? Which is a really fun thing to play in. Levi, do you like playing in the cotton seed? Yeah, because it's really soft, just like your cotton clothes would be. It's kind of like a big pile of dirty laundry. <laughs> big comfortable thing to jump into so it makes a big pile and they can jump off into it and um, they like to play in that one it's enjoyable for them so then uh, the majority of the feed that we grow right here in, in southeast Minnesota for our cows Well, Margaret, I have to say your family is just adorable. I just love, it makes, you know, myself as a mom, it just makes me think of um, these times with our kids at home that we stay extra busy, that's for certain. Um, I'm looking through the questions here. We're getting lots of them. Um, hopefully we can get to all of them. Um, I was looking for one specific here. Um, so did you talk about the sand in the bedding? I just wanna make sure I didn't miss that. Um, did you explain why the, the perks of sand? and what versus other bedding options for cows? Sure, yeah, we can talk about that. So one thing that is really nice about the sand, first of all, is really comfortable. It keeps them really dry. Uh, the other thing that I like about it is that it, <laughs> it's anaerobic, which is a really big word. Basically it's um, maybe the cleanest option would be the, um, the right word for it. it doesn't grow bacteria on its own where um, like if you did like wood chips or something those things would decompose and when things decompose it's part of uh, bacteria help things decompose so that's a really long explanation but sand doesn't do that and who doesn't like laying on the beach it's really comfortable for them and it's um, it's a really good option for us. We have a lot of sand right here in this area. So it's something that, it's a resource that we're using right off of our own farm. Um, okay, how much, we're gonna, how much oh, food go do cows eat a day, Margaret? Lots of it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, a, Mike knows the exact poundage probably. I would say 80 to 100 pounds of feed, but he can correct me if I'm wrong on that. He wants to head into the parlor here. They're just going to start bringing the cows in to milk. Oh, good, because we have lots of milking questions. I've been saving them for, for right now. Um, we had a question about robotic milkers, if you use that. So we'll cover that, I believe. Um, and then um, how much milk do you produce in a day? Oh, that's my favorite question. Because our, each of our cows gives about 12 gallons of milk every day. So almost 60, we measure our milk in pounds instead of gallons. And so a gallon of milk weighs 8.6 pounds. And so that's how much we know. We know how much every cow gives, which I said is about 12 gallons a day. And it's just about 60,000 pounds of milk. And so we take one semi load of milk to Quick Trip every single day. And our milk is bottled at Quick Trip or used for whatever uh, products that Quick Trip is selling. And uh, we're really proud of the fact that our milk goes into, uh, into fluid milk. So a lot of milk goes into cheese, but our milk is um, really high quality. And some of the first cows are coming into the parlor here, but we're kind of talking. We got to talk quietly so they, they aren't intimidated. They are uh, very used to the noises that are in the parlor. And so if there's a different noise, they... Mike, do you want to add something about the cows coming into the parlor? Yeah. Yeah, so our, uh, back just quick on the, the feeding and eating. Our cows drink like a bathtub of water a day. So they love water. They're big animals. And they eat about 70 pounds of dry matter. We measure everything by dry matter so that we know exactly what they're getting. So they get about 70 pounds of dry matter of TMR a day is what they, on average, they eat. And it's a buffet. They can have as much as they want. Well, <laughs> we'll go in here now. Our cows love consistency. So we're throwing off their normal routine. So when Levi, come here, Levi. The first cows are coming in the parlor here and they're not sure what we're doing in here. We're not normally in here with a camera. They must be a little starstruck. A little camera shy. That's all right. We can understand that. Yeah. 
I don't think I finished answering that question either about um, how much milk. Oh, I know. I was just going to say, I think one semi load of milk a day leaves our farm. And I felt like there was a second part to that question. Maybe I'm wrong, but if it's so, if anybody wants me to reiterate, we can, we can ask the question again, if I didn't fully answer it. So yeah, the, it, the question was just how much milk do you produce a day? So if you have a, a tanker going every okay. day, what, what's that about? What did you say, Mike? He was doing the math. <laughs> 60,000 pounds <laughs> divided by 8.6. We might have some students on the line. They might have to make this a math question for them. Yeah, there we go. There's your math lesson for the day. So how our many cows come into the oh go ahead oh sorry margaret how many cows do you milk at a time i'm just seeing some good milking questions coming in that is a good question so we're milking 16 cows at a time eight cows on each side and this is called a, a parallel parlor because the cows are standing parallel to one another in their stalls and it's also considered a pit parlor because they you go down kind of so you're almost below the cows uh, right where the action is happening. Michael kind of take you down there and kind of walk you through the milking process a little bit. Okay. Okay, like Margaret said, this is where our parlor. So we transitioned from a tie stall barn to this parlor in 1997. So we've been using it a while and it does a really good job. So eight cows come in at a time. And uh, as you can see, we have really good lights that are shining right where the employees need to be able to see you. So we can do a good job um, preparing the cow to be milked. The cows are in the parlor for about six minutes at a time is all. So they come down, they come in the parlor, they're in here. Um, they're actively being milked for about four minutes. It's very quick and the cows enjoy coming down. They, we, as soon as we open the, uh, the doors for the cows to come in, they are all lined up and running down here. So that what the uh, employees are doing right now is they are, uh, what's that? Oh, so they are cleaning and checking the cows. Maybe do this one, this cow here. Uh, and uh, we are applying a, what you see on the, on the cow's teats right now, that's a disinfectant, just like a hand sanitizer. We wanna make sure that the cow's teats are clean before we um, apply the, the milking units. And so that when, uh, maybe you guys could hear that the vacuum just started. So we use the um, vacuum goes through the milking units, but it's, it's, a, it's like a cows are coming in, they get a massage. So I always tell people, you put your fingers right in here and it's just a really light um, pulsation. You can barely feel it. And then the cows, they, they voluntarily give the milk and they, they're a good sign that they're relaxed and they do a really good, or that the cows are ready to milk as the milk comes out really fast. And uh, if Amanda wants to show the computer up top here, that. That'll show which cow is currently in that stall. So another use of technology. So currently cow number 3710 is being milked right here. And she is ready to be milked. That's a good sign that she's beginning to um, leak her milk. That means she's ready, ready to milk. And we clean with a microfiber towel that we uh, use a brand new clean towel between every cow. And now the milking unit is uh, um, attached. So then the use of technology will tell us how many pounds this cow will give and, and each time and how long it takes her to be milked and what time she was milked at. And that also goes all to a computer where we can uh, use all of that data to um, take better care and know how to do a better job taking care of the cows. So as the eight on this side are being milked, we will now get prep the eight cows on the other side. So that's, that helps the cows not be in here very long. They're never waiting. And uh, so we get eight ready on one side and when those are all ready, then the other side will be all done. So question, we got some questions coming in, Michael. Um, so you don't milk it with your hands is a question. Um, and does it hurt the cows? <laughs> nope. No milking with the hands? No, it does not. It doesn't hurt the no cows? No milking with hands. <laughs> okay. And then uh, do they clean the milk before we drink it? No, the milk, milk comes out clean. Milk is never touched by human hands. It goes through a 
pipeline, which we can follow into the bulk tank here in a little bit. And it goes through a, a thing that we can show you that's, that we call a plate cooler, which cools the milk down. So milk comes out at body or cow body temperature, which is 98 degrees. And within seconds of it leaving the cow, it's cooled down to uh, 37 degrees. And we store it at 37 degrees in our bulk tank that we can show you until it is picked up by the milk truck once a day and, and brought to quit trip. And so no, the milking process is a very relaxing, enjoyable process for the cows. Uh, that's why, like I said, they, they look forward or they voluntarily come here and they are excited to, to, um, to milk. Milk is, uh, so our milk hauler, before he takes uh, any milk from our farm, he takes several samples that will be brought to a lab. And, and then when it's dropped off at Quit Trip, it's also take, samples are taken again. And so to make sure that the milk is clean and safe and uh, milk is, comes out of the cow clean and it stays in a sanitary, food safe environment the entire time until it is uh, delivered to a store. So Michael, a common question that I always get from people um, is on the topic of antibiotics. Can you, can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, sure. Good question. Um, so antibiotics are used in animals. Uh, we do use some antibiotics if necessary, uh, very little. So that's only at the discretion if we uh, have a cow that is, is um, ill and we uh, have a consult with uh, our veterinarian. And if they decide that an animal is thick enough where she will need antibiotics, um, we do use them. Um, it's usually if a cow has Oh, like a pneumonia or a um, pink eye or mastitis or something that is a cow is sick and she can't get over on her own. We do everything we can to give them cows, our cows vaccines and boost their immune system. But if they, do these, if they do need antibiotics and that's what the veterinarian decides they need, oh, Jacob's uh, having fun here, then we will. But that, that, um, those cows will be separated from the milking string and that their milk will not be put into the bulk tank until we test. We have an on-farm on lab where we also can test our milk for antibiotics. And so if any cow is given antibiotics, that sample is taken from that cow after a, a determined withhold period from the veterinarian. Uh, we check the milk and if there's no antibiotics in it, that cow will then be allowed to go back into the regular milking string and put in, her milk will go in with the, there are other cows in the bulk tank. All right, so, so as we-, we uh, or my goes say as we move on to show the bulk tank here, um, how long does it take to milk all 600 cows? So good question. We, we milk in, uh, it takes about five hours and 30 minutes to milk all 600 cows. So they come in and they go back to their free stalls really fast. So we, our cows are in six different groups so we can bring them down and uh, they, they, are sorry i'm getting told to be in the camera <laughs> um they come down and they, then they go back to their groups and we bring down a different group from a different pen so they are not coming so we bring down just a few cows at a time they get milked and then they go back to their pen well we have them in the parlor that's one of the as we were saying we clean their pens level out their sand clean their waters and just make sure that everything's ready for them after they return from the milking parlor so margaret you want to come over here buddy we so we are now in our, what do we call our, so Michael, do you still, we're in our milk, what we call our milk room. Oh, I'm sorry. One more question here, Michael. I get, we're, we got lots okay. of interested viewers here. Do you milk a cow if it's still sick? That's good. What was that? Do you milk a cow if it's sick? Oh, yes. Yes, we do. And only if she has antibiotics administered will her milk be separated. But a cow will continue to milk um, if she is sick, yeah. So it would potentially make her, because yeah. Say that we, again. Want her to be, we want her to be very comfortable. So the cow would get very uncomfortable if we did not milk her. So we do everything we can to get her to the parlor so we can uh, help her be more comfortable even while she's sick. There was the, the use of the cow. One thing we talked about before was these. Jacob's getting pretty excited here. Uh, 
is used to the cow manager taking talking about cows that might get sick. I mean, it's, it just does a, a really good job being able to um, find those cows a lot faster and give them the care they need so then the cows recover a lot faster if they do become sick. So if Manny wants to scan over here, so the milk comes in through the wall in a, a stainless pipeline, and then it is goes through the the plate cooler, which is uh, the best way to explain it is like a radiator on a car. The milk passes close by really cold water or well water, which is at like 47 degrees. So that cools the milk down really fast. And then it goes into our bulk tank here, which has compressors that cools the milk even more down to uh, 37 degrees, which is the temperature that it's picked up at and hauled to the to quit trip to the creamery. Anything else in here? Usually it takes about 48 hours or less for the milk to get right here from Trailside Holsteins to your dinner table. So it's only about 48 hours. So milk is really local and milk is really fresh. Dairy products are a really good local fresh option in the grocery store. So uh, Margaret, we have Tony saying that she, uh, growing up on a dairy farm, she had chores as a kid. Um, she got to bottle feed the calves. Do your kids have chores? Our kids do have chores. We are firm believers in our everybody. It takes a team and we're all in doing this together. Our farm is really family oriented and uh, it's in, ingrained in our life. Uh, being part of a farm is being part of a family and it goes to both ways. So our employees are just like an extension of our family. Our kids have chores. They can help feed bottle calves. Uh, at home. They're still pretty little. My kids are seven, six as of just not very long ago, three and almost one. So they're pretty little as far as doing chores. Uh, we have some young heifers that we feed and they can help with that and they can push up the feed to the to the young calves and they can feed bottle calves, but they're still learning a lot and it's amazing how much they're soaking up just being at the farm and how much information that they know about the cow. So we really enjoy watching them and having them grow up here in this environment and learning about animal care and caring for the land. And so it's a really, really um, one of the highlights of my life watching our kids grow up here. We can go back into the parlor maybe and just to, yeah, let's go this way. So, Just Margaret, so we can see the cows. Yeah, Margaret, one more time let's, do a, let's do a rapid fire of uh, Q&A here as we're wrapping up. Um, so Katie Brown is asking, how old is your oldest cow? Okay, I'll let Mike ask that or answer that one. Mike has, not only does he have uh, how the cows are all individually feeling, he has a different uh, system that he keeps track of everything that may happen to that cow. So when she's born and, um, oh, here's the cows leaving. They're all done in the parlor, so they're going to go back to their pens and eat some food and drink some water. But he keeps track of all the cows individually. Um, you can see they each have a, a tag that they get when they're born, and that's their number. And so their number is like their name. Since we have 1,200 animals and a history of a lot of animals, uh, we give them all numbers because we can't name them all. There are some cows that have names that are extra special cows, but the majority of them have numbers. And on that tag itself has some information about like their birthday and maybe who their mom or dad is. So that's some of the information that we keep track of. And so through that system is how we keep track of how old our oldest cow is. What's the answer to that, Mike? Maybe he even yeah. knows who she is, probably. So actually our oldest cow right now is one of your camera camera operator uh, owns. So she is 13 years old or 14, 14. I think she's 14 years old. And then we have a couple cows that are 12 years old, a few 11. The average age of our uh, cow at our farm is just over four years old. So yeah, Margaret was talking about the computer system. Uh, it's just amazing use of technology, how we can uh, keep better track of uh, when we vaccinate the cow, when she was uh, maybe, when she had her last baby, when her daughter is going to have her baby. So it just, it, uh, it's uh, a great tool to help us know as much as we can about the cow. And so we can do a better job caring for their needs. 
So Alex, why don't you go ahead and ask us more questions and we'll head out to the freestall barn where it's a little quieter. Sure, so I have a couple questions about um, uh, male calves. So do you keep all of the male calves? Um, and then are male babies more common or female babies? So about 50% of our calves are, it's a, it's a pretty even 50-50 split. You got a 50% chance of having a boy or 50% chance of having a girl. And so here at our farm, we don't keep the boy calves here just because we have so many animals to keep track of already. So another farmer comes to our farm and gets, our, gets the boy calves and then raises them. All right, uh, next question is when cows reach a certain age, are they then butchered for meat and at what age does that occur? Okay, so the, the gentleman, the farmer that comes and gets our bull calves, he does raise up the bull calves for meat. And I don't know exactly what age he sends them for meat. Is it around two? This is a great question for a beef farmer. Yes. Well, it's not our specialty. I don't know exactly the um, the day when they or the age that they send their uh, their beef calves to market. So if you know a beef farmer, we can find the answer for that for and you. Then, um, do you have any pets there, or what other animals do you have? Well, cows are our favorite. So we have a lot of cows that are, are our pets, but we do have a few farm dogs and they kind of run around. My father-in-law, he grew up having a farm dog. And when he was first milking, he started and he only had about six cows of his own. And uh, when before they built the parlor and the freestyle barn, he would have the, the dog would help him. It would be like his employee and bring the cows into the barn and round them up at night. So um, and bring them into the barn for him. So he really enjoys having a dog. So we have a dog at the farm and then kind of a rescue dog that um, got dropped off by somebody. So we've adopted her. She's kind of a poodle. She's kind of a strange farm dog, but she's around here. And then we've um, had puppies last fall. I think they were born last fall. So we have puppies last fall and we have a couple puppies left here. So. We have a few farm dogs, but mostly cows because really we're the best at taking care of cows. That's why we don't have a lot of other different animals is, you know, we know cows and we love cows. And so we really wanna pour our time and passion into our cows. All right, I'm scrolling through the rest of the questions, making sure I didn't miss anything. Um, so remind us again, how many acres you guys have? About 1,100 acres, and it's alfalfa and corn. And how long have you guys been doing this, uh, being dairy farmers? So being a dairy farmer is kind of a lifelong job. Mike has been here since he was born, so 34 years he's been milking cows. I grew up on a dairy farm too, so um, we milked 27 cows growing up, and but I grew up right in it just as... Um, just as Mike did, just on a different farm. And then together we've been dairy farming for about 10 years since we've been married and since I moved here. So it's crazy to think that almost a decade of dairy farming together has already gone by. I think that is about all the questions or at least a large majority. Hopefully I didn't miss any, any of the questions, but I just wanna thank you guys again for um, letting us tour your farm for the, from the comfort of our home. Um, you know, I've been to your guys' farm before in person, and, and this was just really nice to be able to, to, to visit it here, right here on this computer screen. Technology is amazing. Um, and on behalf of Midwest Dairy, I do want to give a final thank you to our partner, Discover Dairy, for their support in this uh, virtual farm tour. We love being able to host these types of experiences so that you guys can learn um, the farmer's stories. Um, and I want to Again, follow up that um, Michael and Margaret Johnson do have a Facebook page that you can visit Trailside Holstein's page. Um, and again, a huge thank you to you guys for letting us uh, see a little bit of what you do each day. Um, Absolutely, Mike is here, but Jacob is, is uh, actively trying to steal his headset. So <laughs> he apparently has a lot to say, but thank you for giving us this opportunity. Thank you for coming to our farm virtually, which is pretty exciting. We've never done something like this before. 
And I would like to direct you, if you have any other questions, feel free to send us a, a question on Facebook or uh, follow us on Instagram and kind of see the things that are happening on our farm. Um, we try to post a lot of the fun things that we're doing here on a regular basis because it's a great place to live and it's a great, great place to have a family. Thank you for this experience. Yes. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. You too. Thank you.